Good morning, brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God. It's 8.16 a.m. my time here in glorious Woodchuck, Illinois, or Woodchuck, Illinois. Go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. This video was, uh, I attempted to do this yesterday. But a certain four-legged friend of mine, a feline, um, kind of interfered with, uh, <laughs> with this. So, today is the day, Lord willing. <clears throat> I've actually have been working uh, to get the notes for this. took me a couple of days to put this together. Uh, the Lord and I, of course. I'm going to be doing an expository video today on Psalm 107. So please turn there in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. This, this Psalm, Psalm 107, I can't get away from. I just can't get away from it. And, um... Like I said, what we're going to be doing is an expository video, and you are expected to follow along in the scriptures, okay? What we're going to do is we're primarily going to read three verses at a time, and then we are going to look uh, at some corresponding scriptures with what we are looking at, okay? So, with that said, Psalm 107. In your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Psalm 107, we begin, we will be reading verses 1 on to verse 3 to start. <laughs> oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out from the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Look at verse 1. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. <clears throat> You're going to see that appear four times within this psalm. Uh, if you have a ribbon marker, go ahead and use it for this video. Go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Come on, fingers, work with me. Colossians chapter 1. We will be reading verses 9 on to verse 17 in Colossians chapter 1. <coughs> For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, who hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Very quickly, go back to Psalm 107. <clears throat> oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Who is the enemy? the little g-god of this world, Satan, okay? And gathered them out, from, out of the lands from the east and from the west, 
from the north and from the south. Continuing in Colossians chapter 1, from verse 15 now, on to verse 17. <clears throat> Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. <clears throat> and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And by him all things consist. Go to Romans now, chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 11. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 11. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience, experience, and experience, hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. When you are saved, born again, you know, converted, when you are saved, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, dwells within you, ye are sealed unto the day of redemption, eternally secure. Okay? You are given the gift of the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Lord is that Spirit, dwells within you, dear friend. <clears throat> Verse 6, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We're not appointed on the wrath, dear friends. You need to remember that. For if when we were enemies, not saved, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Go now to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12, on to verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12, on to verse 14. <clears throat> For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one capital S Spirit, are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. And refreshing our memories in Psalm 107, verse 4, Oh, verse 3, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Hmm, very interesting, yes? And now go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. You're going to notice in this video, we're going to be in Ephesians quite a bit today. Quite a bit. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 22. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, 
who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, made by men. <clears throat> that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. If you ain't saved, you have no hope. <laughs> you have no hope if you are not saved. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. See, we the Gentile are grafted into the tree of the Jew to make them jealous. We have not replaced the Jew. But see, we being grafted in to their tree, we now have access onto the promises. See, let's continue. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. One Spirit unto the Father. See right there where it says, For through him we both have, we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father, the Jew and the Gentile. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Pope Peter himself being the chief cornerstone. <laughs> you weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> I, be I beg your pardon and have to take any chance to kick Catholicism. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Okay? Now, Psalm 107, verses 4 on to verse 6. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Verse 6, you're going to see very uh, similar readings uh, to that four times within this psalm. Very interesting. Let's read those again from verse 4 on to verse 6. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried on to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 9 on to verse 14. For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle on the unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are not of the world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. Hence, 
because we stand for our Lord Jesus Christ and stand upon the scriptures. Therefore, the world hates us. <clears throat> we are fools for Christ's sakes, for Christ's sake. But ye are wise in Christ. Hmm. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. Oh, you may have a roof over your head, praise the Lord. You may have cover from the um, elements outside your door. But see, you and I, of the Church of the Living God, this is not it. We are seated together in heavenly places with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. This is not our home. We have no certain dwelling place, see. Let's continue. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscurring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse 13. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse 13. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, I, <laughs> and I know how to abound. Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Total dependence upon our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Total dependence upon the Lord. Not you, not your wit, not your brilliance, definitely not your flesh. Total dependence upon the Lord, as he will. And look at verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Refreshing our memories in Psalm 107, verses 4 on to verse 6. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verses 16 on to verse 18. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray, God, that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. That by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Remember our adversary, the devil? walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Yeah, yeah, let's continue. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, 
and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Psalm 107, verses 7 on to verse 9. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 1. On to verse 7. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1, on to verse 7. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the capital S spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called into one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all talking about those who are of the church of the living God, those who are truly saved, born again, converted. Okay? One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And the Lord is that Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Christ is in you. Christ is in you. The gift. The gift of Christ. God the Father living within you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now go to verses 17 on to verse 24. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, willful ignorance, not wanting to know better, purposely. Look at that. Having the understanding darkened, Okay, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, comma, because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. You have chosen that which is evil. To work all uncleanness with greediness. greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Psalm 107, verse 7. Oh, and he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, one verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. 
2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Look at that. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ. Psalm 107, verse 8. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. See that? And now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. See that? Okay. Now go to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, point of reference, remember, we I, I utilize point of reference quite, quite explicitly. Verse 9 in uh, Psalm 107, For he satisfieth the longing soul, and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Okay? Romans chapter 3, verses 20 on to verse 26. Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Okay? And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, one verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, imputed righteousness. God's imputed righteousness unto you, because of what Christ hath done for us. We came to him on his terms, broken and contrite, and have faith on Christ for what he has done. And in that brokenness and contrition, having faith on him, we call upon the name of the Lord and are saved. And see, imputed righteousness is something that every heretic, coadjutor, infiltrator, fake, knows absolutely nothing about. They only know the mechanics of it, but within the heart, they know nothing of it. Not one thing. No, not one thing. Okay? <laughs> not one thing at all. Now, Psalm 107, verses 10, on to verse 12. Such as sit in darkness and the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 
2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 24, on to verse 26. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 24, on to verse 26. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Okay? Let's refresh our memory, shall we? In Psalm 107, verses 10, on to verse 12 again, Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the word of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. And looking at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 26, And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Hmm. What does this say? Being bound in affliction and iron? Interesting. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Verses 18 on to verse 25. Come on, fingers. Work with me. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 25. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You claim to be an atheist, don't believe in God, right? You're without excuse. You what, what? You think all that just came together by chance over millions and billions and blah, blah. yeah, yeah. You're a fool. You're an absolute fool. You're without excuse. You're without excuse. Let's continue. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful. Neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. And their foolish heart was darkened. Why? Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5 now. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 12. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 12. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor, a fornication, and all uncleanness or covetousness. Let it not be once named among you as 
becometh saints. Look at this, okay? He says right here in verse 1, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering, uh, us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Okay, we are bought with a price. All right? And right here, the marks of the loss, the works of the flesh, you could say, but fornication, and uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. You know, a changed life after salvation. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Filthiness, foolish talking, nor jesting. Marks of those who are lost. Okay? Yes, those of us who are saved of the church of the living God, we can do these very things. Yes, but see, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, dwells within us. And when we do these things here, we are chastened brutally, that we may be zealous, therefore, and repent. And you, the lost, you revel, you relish in it all the time just clinging to your belief without any brokenness or contrition. Let's continue. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Just believe, just believe. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Again, children of disobedience is not referring to those of the church of the living God who have just messed up and are being chastened. No, children of disobedience are referring to those who reject the word who reject the gospel, who reject our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and choose the thing, things of the world. Because look at this, again, verse 3, fornication, uncleanness, covetousness. Verse 4, filthiness, foolish talking, jesting. Okay, verse 5, whoremonger, unclean person, covetous man who is an idolater. Okay, that is referring to those who are of the world, who are lost, who are not of the church of the living God. Uh, uh, for, uh, bleh, excuse me. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Okay, he describes these children of disobedience in the previous verses. Okay, and see, those who are of the church of the living God cannot stay thereon. Because if we do, the Lord is going to chasten us brutally or hand you over for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. In other words, he'll kill you if you mess around too badly and not repent. See, you see that? Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Okay? For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Lying, deceit, trickery, false witness. Seeking the praise of men. See? Now I'll go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 
1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 5 on to verse 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 5 on to verse 10. Okay? Children of disobedience. Perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Now remember, all gain is not money. Gain is other things, can mean other things, can be other things. The appraises of men, the coadjutors seek to draw people away from the truth and get uh, disciples going after them. To join their cause to fight against the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. See. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Now, but they that will be rich, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, for which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Now, Psalm 107, verses 13 on to verse 15. Now check this out. Okay? Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and brake their bands in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1, on to verse 12. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1, on to verse 12. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Look at what's happening today, by the way. They say we need peace and safety because of this fictitious coronavirus nonsense that they have created and is being kept alive through the media. Right? We need peace and safety. Y'all need that vaccine, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's continue. But brethren, but ye brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, talking about those who are saved at the church of the living God, those who are converted. And the children of the day, we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. You and I of the church of the living God, we are not appointed to God's wrath. Whoop, we know this. See, and God's wrath is going to be poured out during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Now, you and I of the church of the living God, we're, we're going to go through some, <laughs> especially you and I who are in America. <laughs> yeah, when Smoking Joe finally assumes the reins, right? 
and uh, uh, rule it for a little while, and then they set up Kamala Harris, okay? <laughs> More on that, hopefully, in another video. But, um, yeah, yeah, we're going to go through some hard times here very shortly. But, see, we are not appointed to God's wrath. God's wrath is going to be poured out during the time of Jacob's trouble. We, the church of the living God, are resurrected, called up, caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. And you who are lost, you infiltrating Jesuit scoundrels, this is your hour, the power of darkness. Those of you who do not want the Lord to deal with you, meaning your pride, your self-righteousness. God help you. Verse 9, For God hath not appointed us unto wrath, but to, to, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you. Okay? Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay? Let's refresh our memories. Verses 13 and 15 in Psalm 107 again, okay? Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and brake their bands in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51, on to verse 58. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, die, you know, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up. In victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, that men, uh, verse 15 in Psalm 107, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 57 in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Okay? Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verses 16 on to verse 22. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, in everything, 
Give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. And Colossians chapter 4, Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 under verse 4. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Now go back to Psalm 107, verses 16 on to verse 18. For he hath broken the gates of brass, and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat. They draw near unto the gates of death. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 on verse 6. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever, uh, whosoever of you are justified by, by the law, that, excuse me, ye are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. And verse 15, But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Hmm. Okay, now go to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Okay, let's refresh our memories. Romans chapter 3, but we're going to be reading verses 3 under verse 18, but verses 16 under verse 18 once again. For he hath broken the gates of brass, and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Fools, because of their transgression and because of, oh, excuse me, of their iniquities are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Romans chapter 3, verses 3 on to verse 18. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and might overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner, doing evil that good may come out of it? Doing things as of the world for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ? Hmm? Hmm? Verse 8. And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil, that good may come, whose damnation is just. All of you fakes out there, who are preaching a false gospel, thinking you're bringing glory to Lord Jesus Christ by preaching something that is false, 
Your damnation is just. You are itching the ears of the people. You are telling them what they want to hear. Woe be unto you. Your damnation is just. Let's continue. What then? Are we better than they? No. In no wise. For we have both proved, we have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. Here's the thing that those of you who are against brokenness and contrition, you just hate this passage of Scripture. Because you don't want to deal with this in yourself. You don't want to come to terms that you are, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. No fear of God before their eyes. None. Zero. Zilch. Zip. Nada. You rather fear men. Okay. Now go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. Like I said, we, we're going to be in Ephesians quite a bit today. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. And you hath he quickened, talking about those who are saved, who were dead in trespasses and sins. You're not saved. Not of the church of the living God, you know, not converted. You're dead in trespasses and sins. Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, the lost, the coadjutors, the fakes. Okay? Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, by nature, children of wrath, even as others. The natural man, the unregenerate man of his nature is a child of disobedience. Which we were, but now we are saved, sealed unto the day of redemption. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, dwells within us, and he will change your life. It's, it's unavoidable, okay? <laughs> it happens. It just happens, okay? But the contrast in these verses, we who were once darkness are now light, Okay, and the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? The comparison between those who are not. You see that, of course, don't you? Okay? Now, go back to Psalm 107. We will be reading verses 19 on to verse 21. Okay? Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. Okay, and looking at verses 17 and verses 18, those who are laden with sins. Verse 19 again. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. And again, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. 
Ephesians chapter 2. Now, verses 4 on to verse 10. See how he did that? You see that? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 on to verse 10. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, God's love is manifest at the cross. Okay? If you do not come to the Lord Jesus Christ, the way of the cross, through brokenness and contrition, His standards, okay? According to His standard, you don't come to the Lord with your self-righteousness. That's what the easy believism crowd does. They hide themselves under the umbrella, all have sinned, yet not wanting the Lord to deal with their own personal sins and the fact that we are not good. See, if you don't meet the Lord at the cross, God's love is not for you. The love of God is Christ and Him crucified. That's the love of God. Let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, He, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. Works referenced there are the works of the law, okay? Lest any man should boast. Change life? For we are his workmanship, Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Verses 19 on to verse 21 again. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 17. You know, he sent his word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? You, you get that? Yeah? Okay? Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 13 on to verse 20. Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 13 on to verse 20. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. <laughs> And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the authorized version of the Scriptures, the King James Scriptures, the true 
and real scriptures. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the capital S spirit, and watching thereon too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Okay, and now go back to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 20. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 20. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we got to read verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. In the fear of God. We, the church of the living God, we fear the Lord. You who are not, there is no fear of God before your eyes. Quick way to tell if someone is of the church of the living God or not. Do they have any fear of the Lord? Remember, the devils also believe and tremble, yes? Yes. But if you had the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, Lord is that spirit dwelling within you. The fear of the Lord will more often than not prevent us from doing many things, wouldn't it? And not just to please men. Now, go back to Psalm 107. We're going to be reading verses 22 on to verse 24. Okay? Verses 22 on to verse 24. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving, and declare his works with rejoicing. They that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Get a load of this. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now notice here in Psalm 107, verse 22, let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. First Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, charity, not love, charity. You can love something and not be charitable. Okay? You can love all the wrong uh, things. Those of you who are Jesuit coadjutors, you fakes, you love your sin. You love your sin. You have no fear of God before your eyes. Charity, dear friend, is self-sacrifice. It's a sacrificial thing. Charity is giving of yourself over yourself for another. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, you know? It's charity, not love. Uh, a lot of these Roman Catholic Bibles take out charity right there and put love. It's charity, self-sacrifice. 
You know, those works that we are, are ordained onto after our salvation. Okay, let's continue. Let's read that again. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or as a, or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Let him deny himself and pick up his cross daily and follow me and be not conformed to this world, but be renewed in your mind. Okay? Okay? You get it? Let's continue. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things, uh, verse 7 is defined by verse 6, so you know. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Hmm. This is going to come into play in another video. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And all these enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, are children. They behave themselves so, acting like bullies on a, a playground, saying things to make people happy, appeasing the crowd. They're children. They're little snotty children. That's all they are. They're not men. Not a man. Let's continue. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. I am known, excuse me. And now abideth faith, hope, Charity, these three, these three, but the greatest of these is charity, self-sacrifice. Okay? Now, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 20. See how we did that? See that? Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 17 on to verse 20. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, become. Behold, all things are become new. Beg your pardon. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, 
as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Psalm 107, verse 22, And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving, and declare his works with rejoicing. Okay? And go to Romans chapter 2 now. Romans chapter 2. Verses 1 unto verse 11. Romans chapter 2, verses 1 unto verse 11. Romans chapter 2, verses 1 unto verse 11. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doeth, for thou that judgest doest the same things. Now, in context, you read from in Romans chapter one, verses twenty-eight on to verse thirty-two. Okay, talking about the lost. When the lost people judge them who do the same things, it's see the judgment here is again hypocritical judgment. Okay. I, of the Church of the Living God, if I were watching pornography, and I come to you say, you shouldn't watch pornography, that's a sin, that you shouldn't be doing that, and I were watching it, hypocritical judgment. Okay? Let's continue. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Okay? And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long, long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impudent heart treasurest up unto thyself, Wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respecter, for there is no, re, ah, for there is no respect of persons with God. And what is a person? Spirit, soul, and body. Remember, we are made in the image of God. Okay? Now, go back to Psalm 107. We will be reading verses 25 on to verse 27. Okay? Verses 25 on to verse 27. For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heavens. They mount up to the heaven. Excuse me. They go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man. They are at their wit's end. Okay? Go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 verses 26 on to verse 32. Romans chapter 1 verses 26 on to verse 32. See how we did that? Huh? See how we did that, huh? <clears throat> for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did not for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust 
one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. Female and male sodomites, lesbians, homosexuals, as they are called nowadays. Okay? And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural, natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. See? Those who are of the easy believism persuasion have pleasure in those who are just like themselves, lost. Misery loves company. These easy believism heretics are looking to take as many people down to hell with them as they can. Misery loves company, as they say. Hold on one second, brethren. Jude. Go to Jude. Remember, Jude does not have chapters. Go to Jude. Jude verses 11 on to verse 13. Jude 11 on to verse 13. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. This reminds me of that um, quote of Shakespeare. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. The arguments of the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ Sound and fury signify, signify nothing. Absolutely nothing. All they can do, all they can do are be like raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. See? Psalm 107, verses 25 on to verse 27 again. For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy, stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to heaven. They that go, they go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Now, let's read from verses 28 on to verse 30. Okay. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad because they be quiet, so he bringeth them unto their desired haven. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 13. 
Romans 10, verses 1 on to verse 13. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. It is the righteousness of God that we of the church of the living God have been given imputed righteousness. Those who overstep brokenness and contrition, who contest humbling yourself, calling upon the name of the Lord, and protest the changed life. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness. You sad, sad, wicked, evil, easy, easy believism heretics. You're establishing your own righteousness. Plain as day. Let's continue. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. By the righteousness which is but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. <clears throat> Say not in thine heart, who hath ascended into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Do you think you've done that? Or, who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. Again. Do you think you have done that? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach. <clears throat> that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Today, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, okay? There's no difference, okay, to the Jew or to the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Verses 6 on to verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 6 on to verse 10. Nevertheless, God that comforteth those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you, when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I, now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage of us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world 
worketh death. See, that's the necessity of brokenness and contrition, sorrow, godly sorrow that you have sinned against the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, that your sins put him up on that cross because of what you have done, because what I have done. Godly sorrow. Sorrow towards God for what you did unto him. Not one of you easy believers and heretics has that. Because there is no fear of God before your eyes. See. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 25. But before we do that, let's refresh our memories in Psalm 107, verses 28 on to verse 30. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad, because they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their desired haven. Romans chapter 8, verses 11, unto verse 25. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, if, okay, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Mortify, put down. Okay? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are, are, that we are the children of God. I've heard people who claim to be King James Scripture believers uh, protest itself right there, the Spirit itself, claiming to be King James Scripture believers, okay? These Roman Catholic perversions, okay, they put instead of itself, himself, playing to the three person equals one God, boop, Trinity, where this, the Spirit itself, part of the Godhead, Spirit, Soul, and Body, okay, okay, itself, not himself, okay. See, putting himself in place of itself is playing onto the Catholic Trinity, which is satanic. Okay? I, I, I had to say that. Let's continue. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Reference right there to the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Reference right there. Okay. Verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Look outside your door. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. 
catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for what we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Very quickly, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Just one verse in Hebrews. Hebrews is written, written on to the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. This is specifically for them. But Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And very quickly, what are we hoping for? The Church of the living God. You know the answer to this. You better know it. Uh, Titus chapter 2, verses 11 under verse 14. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Now, go back to Psalm 107. We will be reading now verses 31 on to verse 34. And look at this. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turneth rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 unto verse 14. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 unto verse 14. <clears throat> Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. <clears throat> And whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, and whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, 
which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Alleluia. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy chapter 1 verses 3 and verse 9. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Oh, beg your pardon. Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that is in thee, that in thee also. Excuse me. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel, who uh, gospel according to the power of God, excuse me, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. <clears throat> and looking back at Psalm 107, okay, verses, where were we? Okay, verses 31 on to verse 32. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turneth the rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. Okay? Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1, under verse 17. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, evil of, uh, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. What things sake? What are these things? Uh, let's see. Um, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, concupiscence, covetous, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And because of that, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew, 
uncircumcision or uh, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. That's command, not an option. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. And unto man he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding, Job 28, 28. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. <clears throat> now go to Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verses 13 on to verse 24. Romans chapter 9, verses 13, on to verse 24. Now let's read in Psalm 107, verses 33, into verse 34. He turneth rivers into a wilderness, and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. Romans 9, verses 13, on to verse 24. <clears throat> As it is written, Jacob have I loved. But Esau have I, ate, have I hated. Excuse me. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Great definition of grace. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but God that sheweth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet fall? Find fault. For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Now this is not giving credence to Calvinism. No, again, God's love, grace, mercy is at the cross. And you come to him on his terms, not your own. And if you do not meet our Lord at the cross, you know, Climbing up some other way, other than the way of brokenness and contrition, repentance, you're a thief and a robber. And remember, God's not holding a gun to your head, neither is the devil. Okay, let's continue. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show, shew his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? All those of you who uh, preach a false gospel, another Jesus, during the time of Jacob's trouble, <laughs> good luck. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory, even us 
whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Now, go back to Psalm 107. We will be reading verses 35 on to verse 37. You're going to notice some really interesting things here. Psalm 107, verses 35 Oop, on to verse 38, excuse me, verse 35 on to verse 38. <clears throat> he turneth the wilderness into a standing water, and dry ground into water springs. And so the fee, uh, oh, and there he maketh the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitation. And sow the fields and plant vineyards, which may yield fruits of increase. He blesseth them also, so that they are multiplied greatly, and suffereth not their cattle to decrease. Second Corinthians chapter 9. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verses 8 on verse 15. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verses 8 on verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 8 under verse 15. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work, as it is written. He hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown. And increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the wants of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men, and by their prayer for you, which long after which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift, the gift of himself, sealed unto the day of redemption. But now, go to Zechariah. Zechariah, chapter 8. Zechariah, chapter 8. Zechariah, chapter 8. Verses 1 under verse 15 in Zechariah, chapter 8. Now let's read this again. Verses 35 under verse 38 in Psalm 107. He turneth the wilderness into a standing water, and dry ground into water springs. And there he maketh the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitation. And sow the fields, and plant vineyards, which may yield fruits of increase. He blesseth them also, so that they are multiplied greatly, and suffereth not their cattle to decrease. Zechariah chapter 8, verses 1 under verse 15. Again, the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I was jealous for her with great fury. Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion, and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, there shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, and every man with his staff in his hand for very age. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls, playing in the streets thereof. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, should it also be marvelous in mine eyes, saith the Lord of hosts? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and I will bring them 
and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God, in truth and in righteousness. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Let your hands be strong, ye that hear in these days these words by the mouth of the prophets, which were in the days that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid, that the temple might be built. For before these days there was no hire for man, nor any hire for beasts, neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. For I set all men every one against his neighbor. But now I will not be unto the residue of this people, as in the former days, said the Lord of hosts. For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due, and I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah, and house of Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, let your hands be strong. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, As I thought to punish you when your fathers provoked me to wrath, saith the Lord of hosts, and I repented not. So again, have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Fear ye not. Okay, now, Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9. You're going to see something here. Amos chapter 9. Verses 11 on to verse 15. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ, ruling and reigning in the millennial kingdom as king. And close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them, and I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled out of their land, which I have given them. Seth, the Lord thy God. Go to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 under verse 6. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Those during the time of Jacob's trouble that did not submit unto the beast and his system. Okay? But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. 
Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. The thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, the millennial kingdom, where he is sitting on the throne in Jerusalem. See, okay? Now, go to uh, back to Psalm 107. We will be reading verses 39 on to verse 43. Again, they are minished and brought low through oppression and sorrow. He poureth contempt upon princes, and causeth them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Okay, now look, look at this change, okay? Look at this change. Yet setteth he the poor on high from affliction, and maketh him families like a flock. The righteous shall see it and rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the war of the Lord. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Look at okay, verses thirty nine and forty. Again, they are minished and brought low through oppression, a sorrow, uh, oppression, affliction, and sorrow. He poureth contempt upon princes and causeth them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Revelation chapter twenty, verses seven, on to verse. 15 at the close of the chapter. See that? And then, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Okay? And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. See, after the, what does it say right there? And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Okay? Verse 9. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast, okay, here's your trinity, okay, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The devil... The beast and the false prophet. There's your trinity. <laughs> okay, now. Look back in Psalm 107, verses 39 and 40. Again, they are minished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. He poureth contempt upon princes and causeth them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. At the end of the thousand years, Satan is going to be loosed. And he's going to go forth and deceive the nations, okay? And bring all these people to war against Israel, against our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? It's going to return during that brief time. Satan being loosed. He's going to bring all these people together again. For one last stand. Right? Let's continue. In Revelation chapter 20. From verse 11 to the close of the chapter. And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it. From whose, faith, who, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. 
This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Go to Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65, verses 17 on to verse 25. Isaiah 65, verses 17 on to verse 25. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. But ye, but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. Back in Psalm 107, verse 41 and verse 42. Yet setteth he the poor on high from affliction, and maketh him families like a flock. The righteous shall see it and rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Let's continue in uh, Isaiah 65 from verse 19. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. For there shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not fulfilled his day, not, that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old. But the sinner being an hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall, shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass, that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. Now go back to Revelation chapter 20, uh, Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 on to verse 10. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he saith unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and the unbelieving, and the, abom and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will shew thee the bride the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and shewed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Now we're skipping, 
going from verses 22 on to verse 27. Verse 22 on to verse 27. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. One God, just one God, okay? And this city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whosoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Psalm 107, verses 41 on to verse 43. Yet setteth he the poor on high from affliction, and maketh him families like a flock. The righteous shall see it and rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Let's finish this up with Revelation chapter 22. And he shewed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. One <laughs> God, okay? In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yield her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Uh, a brother of our, of mine, of ours, uh, brought this up about verse 2, how it says, In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, you know, the tree of life branching on uh, either side of the river. Maybe people going under it. I don't know. Because it's uh, in the midst of the street of it. And on either side of the river was there the tree of life. The definitive article. One. On either side. So, either side. On either side of the river and things going under it. We'll find out, won't we? Yeah, let's continue. Verse 3. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. One God. And his servants shall serve him. Singular. One God. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Let's continue. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Okay? And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to shew unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which shewed me these things. Now watch this. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. Who is this? I believe this is one of us of the Church of the Living God that has come back with our Lord Jesus Christ at his second coming. Okay? That we come down with him at his second coming. That's why he says, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant. Okay? Let's continue. And he saith unto me, 
Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time it is and for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth, oh, excuse me, and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come! And let him that heareth say, Come! And let him that is a thirst, Come! And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. You don't mess with this book, the scriptures. There are those out there who's like, well, that's just talking about the book of Revelation. <laughs> yeah, those of you who like to argue that uh, are ones who hold to Sinaiticus and Vaticanus, you know, the fake scriptures. Okay, no, they're not even scriptures. Beg your pardon, the fake Bibles. Beg your pardon for that, okay? You don't mess around with the scriptures, dear friends. And the yea hath God said crowd, the Jesuits with their uh, textual criticism. And isn't it interesting when you look into it, what is the most changed book in all of scripture by these Jesuits? The book of Revelation. <clears throat> Verse 18 again. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. And every single one of you, my brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God, even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Psalm 107, verse 43. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Well, brethren, that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to get this one uploaded, and I do have another one, Lord willing, that uh, may be getting to, but this, this one took a couple days to um, you know to compile all this and like I said I tried to do it yesterday but a certain feline friend of mine my cat who's dying um, so anyway may our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father be magnified I hope this helps may he be uh, magnified and glorified through his word and uh, thank you all of you for those of you who, are, who may watch this, thank you. And we love you. We are praying for so many of you. 
and we will see you in the next video.